Good day dear students. This is the second video on neurotransmitters. In this video, I'll be talking about serotonin, glutamate and GABA. So the competency is 10.10. 10. 10 relates to neurophysiology and this is a 10 sub-competency. That is, describe and discuss chemical transmission in the nervous system with explaining the psychiatry element. The learning objectives for the video are that you should be able to describe the following neurotransmitters serotonin glutamate and gamma with regards to the sites receptors functions and applied aspects i'm going to talk in this video how these popular drugs prozac or fluxetine works this is a class of drugs called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors how a drug like alprazolam or a benzodiazepine works and how the area around the stroke extends in the neighboring due to some neurotransmitter effects. Serotonin. We all know about depression. This is a person with major depression. There is a theory for depression which is known as the monoamine hypothesis which means that when these biogenic amines that is serotonin, norepinephrine and dopamine are deficient, a person suffers with depression. So serotonin deficiency is responsible for major depression. It is one of the key elements which is implicated in the causation of major depression. This is a drug Prozac or Fluxetine which was introduced into the market in the 1980s and it is considered to be a wonder drug. It is widely prescribed. What is it? It is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor or SSRI. And these drugs are widely used for the treatment of major depression and OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder. Where is serotonin present? It is present at three major sites. It is present in the brain in the limbic system, which is involved with the regulation of emotions. It is present in the gut, where it mediates both secretion and peristalsis. A large amount of serotonin, in fact, is present in the gut. It is also, as you know, present in the platelets. It mediates platelet aggregation and smooth muscle contraction. Serotonin receptors, they are the 5-HT1 to 5-HT7. And in each of these, there are several other subtypes. But please remember, all these receptors are G-protein coupled receptors. Means they are metabotropic receptors. Except 5-HT3, which is an ion channel. So the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors they act on the metabolism of serotonin that is serotonin is metabolized once it exerts its postsynaptic effects by reuptake into the presynaptic neuron this is mediated by a serotonin transporter which is called SERT S E R T you can see when SERT is functioning normally the amount of serotonin remaining in the synapse after it exerts its effects is very less on the contrary when SERT is blocked by fluxetin Prozac, then the amount of serotonin is much more and the effects of serotonin are enhanced. Thus, it elevates mood and used in the treatment of depression. So SERT is blocked by SSRIs. That is selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Major depression. What are the symptoms? The symptoms of major depression include depressed mood, feelings of worthlessness, decreased ability to concentrate, insomnia, hypersomnia, anorexia, loss of appetite, fatigue. And these SSRIs or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like Prozac are effective in the treatment of major depression. Glutamate. We'll study glutamate with regard to the sites, with regard to its receptors and the applied aspects. 
So glutamate is responsible for 75% of the excitatory neurotransmission in the brain. It is the most common excitatory neurotransmitter in the brain. It is released in all the excitatory projections from the white matter of the cortex. It projects to other parts of the cerebral cortex, also project to the brain stem and spinal cord. Thionotropic receptors for glutamate are NMDA, n methyl d aspartate AMPA, and kinate. Please remember that all the neurons in the CNS express NMDA and AMPA receptors, n methyl d aspartate and AMPA receptors. All neurons in the CNS have these receptors. The metamotropic receptors are m glu r1 to r5 uh, and defects in r1 is responsible for severe motor incoordination. So it is expressed in areas where motor functioning is mediated as for example in the basal ganglia and the cerebellar circuits. Defects in r1 also result in deficits in spatial learning. Spatial learning occurs in the hippocampus, a seahorse-shaped structure in the temporal lobes of the brain. The R5 receptor is being studied, that is research is going on for schizophrenia, major depressive disorders and in the domain of autism. Glutamate is responsible for consolidation of memory. It mediates this to a phenomenon called long-term potentiation, which is a persistent enhancement of the postsynaptic response. That is, the postsynaptic response is considerably enhanced and it, this phenomenon also occurs very rapidly. Please remember that both AMPA and NMDA receptors have a role, though this long-term potentiation is said to be NMDA-mediated. So, how does it occur? So first, glutamate binds to the AMPA receptor. This results in the AMPA receptor activation, which removes the magnesium block from the NMDA receptors. As a result, there is calcium influx to the NMDA receptors and hence enhanced postsynaptic response. This is a tripartite glutaminergic synapse, which consists of a presynaptic glutaminergic neuron, a postsynaptic glutaminergic neuron, and an astrocyte. Glutamate is metabolized by reuptake into the astrocyte, surrounding astrocyte. And this reuptake requires a sodium gradient. Why this is important is that the sodium gradient is disturbed in stroke. The sodium potassium ATPase pump creates a sodium gradient as a result. To secondary active transport mechanisms, glutamate is transported into the astrocyte. This is mediated by what is known as EAAT or excitatory amino acid transporter 2. In the brain, when there is a stroke, then adjacent cells lose their ability to maintain the sodium gradient. As a result, a large amount of glutamate accumulates. And this glutamate causes calcium influx to the NMDA receptor and that results in excitotoxic cell damage around the ischemic core. This area around the ischemic core is known as the penumbra. Drugs acting on glutaminergic receptors. One is Reluzole, which is widely used in the treatment of ALS or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. ALS is known as Lou Gehrig's disease in USA after the famous baseball player Lou Gehrig who died of the disease. And there is another drug called Mimantin, which is thought to slow the progression of Alzheimer's disease. Now coming to GABA. GABA is the most common inhibited neurotransmitter in the brain. It mediates both presynaptic and postsynaptic inhibition. The receptors for GABA are GABA A, which are ion channel link receptors. These are the receptors for the tranquilizer drugs, benzodiazepines. Benzodiazepines are used in the treatment 
of anxiety and for insomnia. There are GABA B receptors, which are G protein coupled receptors, and GABA C receptors, which are also inotropic receptors. How does presynaptic inhibition by GABA occur? So once GABA is released at the presynaptic neuron, this is a presynaptic neuron, this is a postsynaptic neuron, and this is a GABA energetic neuron. And what does GABA do is it binds to the GABA receptors and increases chloride influx. This leads to hyperpolarization or decreased depolarization. And as a result, there is decreased release of neurotransmitter. Benzodiazepines act at the GABA A receptor, inhibit the presynaptic terminal, and decrease the release of neurotransmitter. Include drugs such as diazepam, alprazolam, clonazepam, used in the treatment of anxiety disorders and for insomnia. So the take home points are. That antidepressants like fluxet and Prozac increase the level of serotonin in the brain by inhibiting its reuptake. They inhibit the reuptake by acting on the serotonin transport or CERT. Glutamate is responsible for consolidation of memory through the phenomenon of long term potentiation, which is NMDA receptor mediated. After an ischemic stroke, accumulation of glutamate causes excitotoxic cell damage. And benzodiazepines act by causing presynaptic inhibition by acting on GABA A receptors. Thank you. Enjoy the day.